an obscure and largely forgotten piece of radio circuit technique is the Q multiplier. Put across a parallel tuned circuit, they would use positive feedback to improve its selectivity. This was particularly useful in the days when radio receivers had low intermediate frequencies, i.e. 455 kHz or less, and before crystal filters came in to provide improved selectivity. With a Q multiplier, you could provide some positive feedback and that would tighten the Q of the tuned circuit, making it more selective. It's a similar effect to using a regenerative receiver, where as you advance the regeneration control, the selectivity tightens. One application of a Q multiplier is in improving the performance of a crystal set. Here's about the simplest circuit that will do it. First of all, we'll describe the crystal set circuit. It's a pretty straightforward design. The antenna either connects to a primary winding or to one of the taps on the main winding. The main winding is the bigger one and is what determines the frequency that the crystal set will cover. It's in parallel with a tuning capacitor with a maximum capacitance of around 200 to 400 picofarads. The winding has various taps so you can optimize the position of both the antenna connection and the diode. Depending on what station you're listening to, whether it's weak or strong, you'll have different tap positions will give best reception, with a trade-off between selectivity and sensitivity. Anyway, on the free end of the diode is connected the headphones between that and ground. I haven't shown it in the circuit, but you may wish to have a capacitor of a round run nanofarad across the headphones to short any RF down to earth. Also, if you're using a crystal earpiece instead, you can have a high value resistor between about 100K and 1 meg across the earphone. That will provide a DC path and may be necessary in some circumstances. If you don't have a crystal earphone, you can use a piezo transducer instead, and they may be cheaper or easier to buy. Anyway, having a look at the Q multiplier, there's not very many parts in it, just a BC548 transistor, it could be any basic NPN transistor, a 100K between base and collector, 10k between collector and the wiper of a potentiometer. That potentiometer can be between about 10 and 100k. Its value isn't really critical. Connecting to the free end of the potentiometer is the plus terminal of a 9 volt battery, the other end to ground. As you can see from the diagram, the emitter of the Q multiplier is tapped low down on the tuning coil, only about 3 or 4 turns above the earth. The base is loosely coupled to the hot end of the tuning coil, which is also where the variable capacitor is connected. I first of all tried a low value of capacitor, around 5 picofarad. You can just use a small disc ceramic for that. However, in the end, I found I didn't need it. I could just use what's often called a gimmick capacitor, which is about 40 or 50 millimeters of enameled copper wire just lightly wrapped around the variable capacitor connection. So that's probably only a couple of picofarad capacitance, but it provides enough coupling for the Q multiplier to have an effect. This is a close-up of the gimmick capacitor, the wire going from the base of the BC548, enameled copper wire a few turns over the lead to the tuning capacitor. Just for the camera, I'll use an IC audio amplifier, though all the stations are audible on these high impedance headphones. One thing that you'll find is that if you experiment with the coil taps, you can sometimes get different levels of loudness.
just for this other tapping point you'll notice that the signals are a bit louder but the selectivity is inferior. You'll also hear in between stations background which is coming from a much closer local station further up the dial. I should point out I'm using an earth connection. This is connected to my kitchen water tap and this antenna is just the dipole outside. Anyway, that's with the crystal set with no Q multiplier. It's picking up probably five or six local stations. The furthest being about 40 or 50 kilometers distant. We'll now turn on the Q multiplier. You'll notice a bit of squealing. This control is a bit like a regeneration control. That's at maximum. And it's definitely louder with the Q multiplier in compared to when it's not. But on the other hand, on this station, if I change the coil settings, it's even better. One thing about the Q multiplier, which you'll find out later on, is that it tends not to improve the strength of medium to strong signals. It's really only on the weaker signals that it seems to improve. Now you'll notice that there's weak carriers that we couldn't hear before. probably interstate stations. It's probably a bit hard to hear on the camera but this signal is strong enough to be audible. As you can hear the selectivity is pretty good. Just repeating the test, Q multiply switched out. I've got a point here where just hear a difference in the noise. Slight different hiss, but you're not hearing a station. Advance it so it's oscillating. And it's an audible signal.
lot of stations that are fairly weak. If I was wearing headphones, I think they would be audible. There'd be no hope of hearing them without the Q multiplier. And it's a bit less temperamental than a regenerative receiver. Um, you can pretty much set and forget the Q multiplier setting. Now, here's a demonstration. I'm off the frequency of this very strong station, and as I advance the Q multiplier, it disappears almost. Bit of hand capacity there. So that's our demonstration of the Q multiplier. Maybe it doesn't appeal to the crystal set purist because it does draw power, although you could argue that there aren't actually any active components in the signal path, assuming you're using headphones. It certainly tightens the selectivity of the receiver and allows reception of much weaker stations, including interstate, that would otherwise not be possible without the Q multiplier. Because I used a switch potentiometer, I can readily switch out the Q multiplier completely. So I'd recommend this arrangement for almost any type of crystal set. Build a Q multiplier and you'll have the option of pure crystal set listening or improved selectivity and weak signal sensitivity with the Q multiplier oscillating.